Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on Newton's Laws of Motion. The topic of this video is how to analyze an Atwood's machine. We wish to learn how do you use a free body diagram and Newton's second law to analyze an Atwood's machine problem. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. This is an Atwood's machine. An Atwood's machine is an apparatus that was invented by George Atwood in 1784 in an effort to study the mechanical laws of motion related to constant acceleration. As you see, the machine consists of two masses connected by a string. The string is wrapped over a pulley that rotates. As the more mass of object is lowered, the less mass of object rises upward, and they do so with a constant acceleration. A typical Atwood's machine scenario provides values of the masses that are hanging by the strings and asks you to calculate calculate the acceleration of those masses and the tension in a string. An Atwood's machine problem typically assumes that the string is massless and doesn't contribute to the overall mass of the system, that the pulley itself is massless and as it spins does not have any rotational kinetic energy, and finally that the bearings of the pulley are frictionless. While these aren't perfect assumptions, they are good approximations that allow us to use Newton's second law in order to analyze an Atwood's machine problem. In a previous video, this one, I discuss how to solve a two-body problem. I've left a link in the description section of this video if you need to review it. In the video, I introduced a two-step method for determining the acceleration and the internal force acting between the two objects. The first step is what we call the system analysis, and in the system analysis, we draw a free body diagram for the system of two objects, pretending the actual two objects are one. And then we use Newton's second law in order to determine the acceleration of the system. In the second step, we pick either one of the objects, we draw a free body diagram, and then we use Newton's second law in order to determine the internal force or the tension in the string. We're going to employ the same method to analyze Atwood's machine problems because like any two body problem, an Atwood's machine problem can be solved in two steps. The first step is what we call the system analysis. Instead of considering there being two objects, we think of them as one object. The mass of the system is simply the combined mass of the two objects. We draw a free body diagram and then we use that free body diagram in Newton's second law to relate the masses of the objects to the acceleration. Then in the second step, we pick either one of the object, it really doesn't matter which one you pick, you draw a free body diagram and you apply Newton's second law in order to relate the mass of the object, the acceleration, and the tension in the string. It's important to understand what a pulley does. The pulley changes the direction of a force without actually changing the magnitude of the force. Because of the pulley, our system is a very irregularly shaped and uncomfortable shaped system. Here is a picture of our system with the two forces that act upon it. There's the force of gravity on the left side of the system, and there's the force of gravity on the right side of the system. When you look at these two forces, you might think that this whole system would accelerate downwards since the only forces are downwards. But don't forget there's a pulley in between those two forces. And so the force on the right side is actually an opposing force since the pulley changes the direction of that force. It's often commonplace to rearrange the system so that it looks something like this, stretched out horizontally and straightened out such that there's two competing forces of gravity, one on the left side of the system and one on the right side of the system. In this case, the net force on the system is m1g minus m2g. I think we're now ready to start our example problem. In our example problem, a 5 kilogram and a 10 kilogram object are attached by a string that's stretched around a pulley. We wish to determine the acceleration and the tension in the string. So we begin with a system analysis in order to determine the acceleration of these objects. In the system analysis, we pretend that these two masses are simply one and moving and accelerating together. The total mass of the system is 15 kilograms. The string is inside of the system and as such does not be, need to be regarded when we draw the free body diagram. There's two forces on this system, as we just mentioned. There's the force of gravity on the left side of the system, which we'll call M1g, and there's the force of gravity on the right side of the system, which we call M2g. Now what we'll do is we'll say that the F net is the bigger force minus the smaller force. That's how we always do it when they're in opposite directions. So the F net is M1g minus M2g. We can take the values of M1 and M2 and the value of g, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and substitute it into this equation and solve for the net force. It ends up being 49.0 newtons. Now that we know the mass of the system and the net force on the system, we can calculate the acceleration as F net divided by M. 49.0 divided by 15.0 comes out to be 3.26666 
repeating, meters per second per second. Now that we've determined the acceleration, we'll use an individual object analysis to determine the tension in the string. This is when you pick either one of the objects, and it doesn't matter which one you pick. I just happen to pick M1 here, the 10 kilogram mass. Later, I'll do it again picking the 5 kilogram mass. But for this 10 kilogram mass, it's accelerating downwards due to the force of gravity that acts upon it. But there's another force on this mass. There's a string touching it, which pulls upwards on the mass with a tension force. I know that's a smaller force because this object is the one that's accelerating downwards. I can calculate the downforce, the force of gravity, by going 10 times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. I get 98.0 newtons for my downwards force. I can also calculate the F net since I know the mass of this object and I know its acceleration from step one. When I go 10 kilograms times the 3.2666666 meters per second per second, I get approximately 32.7 newtons as the net force. Now watch this. I look at that free body diagram and I see the bigger force is the down force and the smaller force is the up force. They're in opposite directions. So I say F net is equal to the bigger force minus the, the smaller force, F grav of object one minus the F tension. Now what I do is I substitute in values for my net force and for my force of gravity and I have to solve for the tension force. Now the way you'd solve that for tension is you'd add tension to both sides of the equation and subtract 32.7 newtons from both sides of the equation and it turns into this. So now pull out your calculator and subtract 32.66666 from your 98.0 newtons and you get 65.3 newtons as the tension in the string. I mentioned that it doesn't matter what mass you pick to do your individual object analysis, that we could have picked mass 2 and we should still get the tension value of 65.3 newtons. So let's prove it. Here's mass 2 and I want to do an individual object analysis. So I know there's a gravity force down and then there's a string attached to this mass and it's pulling upwards. This little mass accelerates upwards so I know that the tension force arrow is larger than the gravity force arrow. Now I can calculate the down force by going m2 times g. 5.0 times 9.8 comes out to be 49.0 newtons. And I can also calculate the F net on this object by going M times A. 5.0 times 3.26666 repeating comes out to be approximately 16.3 newtons. Now watch this. I look at my free body diagram and I say F net equal the larger force minus the smaller force. F net equal F tension minus F grab on object 2. Now I know the value of F net and I know the value of F grab so I substitute it into the equation. Now to solve this equation for F tension, I have to add 49.0 newtons to both sides. I end up with this. When I pull out my calculator and do the math, wouldn't you know, I get the same force I got before, 65.3 newtons for the tension force. It doesn't matter what object you pick to do the individual object analysis. It's at this time in every video I like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out with that, could you help us out by giving us a like or subscribing to the channel or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now here's your action plan. Here's two resources that you'll find on our website. There's links to each in the description section of this video. I want to call your attention particularly to the bottom resource, a tutorial page on two body problems. There you'll find several example and practice problems with answers and fully worked out solutions. It'd be a great follow-up to this, to this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.